Well, forgive me for asking this question, but how often do the two of you take a case that's maybe a little bit too, dare I say, intimidating or maybe too controversial? Daily. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're, you're asking the wrong folks because it, it, those are like, oh, great. What a fun. Uh, example, uh, two years ago, the talk of Sundance was a film, little black and white film, horror film that was shot surreptitiously at Disney World. It was every, a talk of, a talk of Sundance. Every publication that said anything about the film said, isn't it too bad it won't be released? Oh, it can't be released. There are hundreds of people in the background, copyright material, trademarks, logos. They'll never get it released. So where did the film land up? In our office, we worked with the filmmaker, a couple little tweaks and it got released, got insured. That's what we love to do. Yeah. Yeah, we kind of, I think we kind of thrive <coughs> off those controversial, not necessarily controversial, but I think it's more um, where people have a preconceived idea of what the law is. And so much of that is based on policy created by studios that doesn't necessarily apply to independent filmmakers. And so a lot of, a lot of issues that filmmakers think are really difficult. I mean, a, a very, um, tangible example is people wearing t-shirts with a logo on it or a hat. How many times do I get the question of can we use that or I have to blur this logo out? Absolutely not. You don't have to blur that logo out. You know, you may want to because maybe you want that brand to give you money for product placement, but legally you have every right to use that trademark in the manner in which it's intended. And you're even looking at me like, really? <laughs> really? <laughs> Interesting. So there's so many issues like that. So I don't want controversial, I don't think is the right word, but it's more just taking these principles that people believe are true and dispelling them of that. Interesting. Yeah, we, we often talk about the worst sensor in the world, which are the scissors in your mind. Okay. <laughs> Just thinking People something have else, these yeah. ideas that they can't, they shouldn't. They'll get in trouble if they do. And we work with them so that they can be insured, which covers the issue of what happens if somebody comes after us. And, and uh, film after film after film that are really difficult. Um, I don't know if your camera's picking it up, but right behind us is a poster for Room 237. A third of that film was comprised of clips from The Shining in a film that the Kubrick estate would hate. And they did. And they call. And we deal with them. But we have insurance in place and all we ever did was uh, organize a nice disclaimer at the front which was perfectly satisfactory to the filmmaker. In fact, worked in the filmmaker's favor actually. That was on the screen for a long time and made the audience laugh and, and also set up the fact that, you know, this, this is how these professors deconstruct The Shining, not the way the Kubricks deconstruct The yeah. Shining. Man, gosh, we have so many examples. Yeah, there's a lot like that. And they are they're, they're exciting for us because we feel that we open the door to filmmakers that they didn't know could it be opened at all, you know? And when we get that satisfaction from a client, it's so satisfying satisfying for us, you know, to get that and to for a client to go, wow, thank you, I could have never made this movie without you. And I don't think a lot of lawyers get that yeah, in it's, exchange, it, and it's we're, very we're nice. We're blessed, we're yeah. blessed. The first line on our website is helping artists tell their story their way. And that's what we're all about. So when somebody comes in, as you say with this, scare, it's scary to maybe other lawyers, maybe right. scary to them. We just wring our hands and say, oh, let us jump into this. <laughs> um, well, we had a, we had a, a great one. Um, uh, last can, the talk of the, of the festival was a film called Welcome to New York. It was a biopic about Dominic Strauss-Kahn and his predilection for New York hotel maids, told <laughs> from the hotel maid's point of view. We couldn't talk to her because she'd signed a confidentiality agreement. Certainly, Dominic Strauss-Kahn wasn't going to talk to us, and his wife, uh, depicted by Jacqueline Bissett, uh, Dominic Strauss-Kahn was played by... Uh, Gerard Depardieu. Yeah, yeah. What, uh, you know, it, people thought this would never get released. It not only got released, it was shown at the Cannes Film Festival. Everybody was talking about it. 
And uh, we actually, in that case, did not get any phone calls, in spite of scenes that were, were made up between Mr. and Mrs. Khan. We worked with the filmmaker on how to do that so that it would be insurable. That's always the key for us. Can we get the me and O insurance? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Is that where this safe harbor clause, or I, maybe I'm you know, distorting the, the meaning of it, but is that where this all comes into play? Well, or that comes into play on copyright infringement questions. Ah, okay. With the Dominic Strauss-Kahn example, those are personal rights. Right. Okay. Very different area of the law. Uh, and in uh, Escape from Tomorrow, the black and white horror film shot surreptitiously at Disney World, you had personal rights of all the people in the background. You, ha you had a lot of fair, is fair use issues with trademark and copyrights that were present in the film. So we, yeah, it all, right. that one had everything. It had everything, yes. right. It was the full basket <laughs> of it. Exactly.